Get hyped, y'all. This week on In the Kitchen with Alkaline Zen, we have a triple pack. And actually, I want to address a couple of things out the gate. A lot of people, they think it is rabbit food on this side. But I want to take a moment to shout out an extraordinary chef, the Amazing Rabbit 2020. And you see me with some emergency prep food. But look at this walnut meat dish that she did. Um, as she, I mentioned, I would be doing a walnut meat dish. I asked her to join me in on the process, which is going to be one of the three pack you see today. And the butternut squash is a very underused, delicious vegetable. And it can be done a lot of different ways. You can just chop and saute, throw it in your veggie stir fry. I chose to bake it. So first you peel it, okay? And then you, I chopped it into thirds and I baked it. And you want to turn it, you know, bake it on like 380 or 400, uh, turn in the middle, all right, for 40 minutes, give or take. And you want to do the fork test, of course. And then from there, just as in a quick and emergency meal, outside of what I had planned, I just chopped up a portion and threw on some butternut squash french fry. So shout out to the on the fly products that you can use in emergency situations. This combination came out phenomenal and I really am grateful to see my uncle and family get in the mix. They made some curry pumpkin. They made some, um, you know, a couple of plant-based dishes and we busted out the air fryer. Um, you know, you really got to invest in your health. And there are a lot of different things out there over time that you want to get. The air fryer is a game changer. And you're going to see a lot of great stuff coming up on the channel. Shout out to my cousin that was doing the chocolate cake looking wavy at the same time. So I figured I'd give you guys a shot of that. But the chicken meatloaf. How do we do chicken meatloaf plant-based? With the food processor now expanding my repertoire in the kitchen, getting more into deeper into the recipes that now call for some premeditated seasoning and, and, and marinade. I cooked my chickpeas, okay, four cups, and I did a food process with some onions. And you know, you can go with what you like, okay? Because what would you want in your loaf, your chicken loaf? And then for the meat in the center, I had my meat for portobello mushrooms. And simultaneously, I had a chickpea vegetable stock base going for the butternut squash soup, okay? Because I wanted to do three dishes in one. I didn't even get to the third yet. So now you see what it looked like once we were done processing and laying in the bed with the sauteed pep bell peppers, onions, portobello mushrooms. I mean, I, I wanted to overstack it, honestly. Um, that's one thing I wish I did do and I'm gonna change in the next one. But look at that pre-bake and post-bake. That's how it came out. Okay, with a nice crispy flaky layer. Um, I was really hyped to see that we got the texture nailed first time out. Um, as you're gonna see in this cut job, shout outs to Kayla for filming this. Um, we, and I didn't even tell you guys, shout out to Crush Foster for this recipe. Um, and that's exactly, that's one of the main reasons why I'm not gonna be exact with the recipe here because this one isn't mine. But I will tell you exactly what's in the chickpea butternut squash soup and the walnut taco meat, which you're about to see up in the next one. I wanted to make walnut meat burgers uh, or like meat, you know, maybe like a sloppy joe type thing. I wasn't sure what I was gonna do. But I, I know that there's a big thing with walnut meat tacos and walnut meat burgers and all this stuff. So I said, I'm gonna make some walnut meat parts. Um, so are you ready for the money shot though? On the chicken meatloaf? I don't know if you're ready, okay? Cause this is all alkaline, okay? This is not, you know, you're running a, whoo. Oh my goodness, wait till you see this money shot on getting that texture to actually have like a meatloaf style dish, something I haven't had in a long time. It was really fun to do this. I'm not gonna front, um, not because I miss meat per se is because now I feel like I'm leveling up on my, my kitchen game, first of all. And second of all, I made a dish that I feel like a lot of people would enjoy and savor. And speaking of enjoy and savor, this was the near final product on the slow roast on the chickpea butternut squash soup. So I took the other two core pieces that you saw of the butternut squash. I like, not julienne, but did like stand up slices and then chopped them in half and with some tomatoes, onions, 
and uh, those chickpeas and butternut squash. I marinated Guys, that with the chicken, uh, sorry, the vegetable stock. Squash. Uh, the vegetable stock. And this is the finished product chicken. of what you see of these two combination meals. Now I say combination meals because even though it didn't originally start out this way, um, I was really happy with that. Just, I wish I packed it a little bit more with some mushrooms. Um, I can imagine on the next one. And then you're gonna see how we did the walnut and meat tacos. So that was a very basic uh, recipe. And I'm going to, um, when I say basic, I mean like it doesn't involve any, you know, you chopped up three or four ingredients. After you soak your walnuts, you actually uh, just food process it a, a couple of times. But for this chickpea butternut squash soup though, um, I had a brainstorm at the last second. I said, let me combine these two and put them together because, I mean, I was eating them at the same time because I wanted to try both dishes and I was starving. And I just, I mean, wow, guys, I came up with a masterpiece by putting these two bad boys together. And it's something that everybody can recreate, True. okay? Everything you see is alkaline. And here's our soaked walnuts. So, um, shout out to Culture Kitchen. That's where I got this recipe from. Um, the walnut the tacos you see all this banging. Something that I, I wish I did a little bit differently. I didn't pulse them enough. He warned about over pulsing, and I'm gonna link his video. Um, his came out phenomenal. And I already showed you in the beginning, thanks to the Amazing Rabbit 2020, what you can do with walnut meat when you really know what you're doing. She's an elite chef that's been in the game. So I just told her to show me what you can do. And that's what she no recipe whipped up. Shout out to Culture Kitchen though, because this was right along the lines of like the, the burger style that I was looking for. And I just, I liked mine, the way it tasted and everything, but the pieces were so large and it wasn't quite as soft as I would have liked. So I think I'm gonna do a longer soak next time. But for everybody out there that thinks that plant-based eating can't be a Philly cheesesteak with mushrooms or can't be a delectable soup with quinoa, um, you're selling yourself short. And we're getting ready to take it to the next level. So stay tuned for next week. Um, I'm going to put up some clips here now with the details that I didn't cover. Stay tuned and hit that bell, like this video, subscribe if you haven't already. Sorry to hit you with that, but it's what it takes to grow these things out here and get this message of healing to as many people as possible. But thanks for your support and I'll definitely be serving up a hit next week on Wednesday. Grandma.